Born in a home of richness, mother was Khunnath bin Malik. He was extremely handsome. When other Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum used to have one or two pieces of clothing, his clothes was custom made and came all the way from Syria. When he walked the streets of Mecca, that women would line up just to glance at him. The fragrance that he left behind, people would know that most of Ibn Umayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu walked this path. Had everything he wanted, who lived the life of a prince. But come one day in his life, he heard about people gathering in a home that a messenger had, came, had come to them. And one night he sneaked out of his home and he went to the house of Arqam, Ibn Abl Arqam. They went and he opened the door and they saw the prince in front of them, perfumed, dressed, custom made clothing. They were very happy. That particular night, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was speaking about the hellfire. And the things the people are engaging in the dunya that would take them to the hellfire. He was moved as he listened about the akhirah. And there and then he professed and he uttered the shahada. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasul. He consulted with the Rasul sallallahu alayhi And the companions and the Rasul told him, listen, keep your deen to yourself and don't announce it. Every single night he would creep out of his home and he would go to listen about Allah and the Rasul. Come one night as he was sneaking in the home of Arqam, Ibn Al Abil Arqam, one of the Kuffar Quraysh saw him going into the home. And he brought it up to their family meetings and they said, Ya Mus'ab, have you left the traits of our forefathers? And he announced and he professed his faith and says, yes, I have. His mother who loved him so much, she wanted to hit him and she wanted to hurt him. But she had love in her, in her heart. What she did is she got her guards because they were wealthy and she tied her own son up in the corner of the house and put a guard in front of him. Musab ibn Umayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he heard of immigration, the companions are making a migration to Abyssinia. So one night, he timed it well when his guard fell asleep. He unshackled himself and he made the migration. False news came, my respected brothers and elders, that Mecca has accepted Islam. And he came back only to find that it was false news. There he met his mother. And his mother told him, are you still in the deen of Muhammad sallallahu And he says, yes. And she says, leave the deen. Come back to what you have. Come back to wealth. Come back to prosperity. Your shoes, your clothing, everything is custom made for you. But he chose Allah and the Rasul. And he left them. Upon leaving them, she said, listen, every single thing that you have been living by like a prince, for 20 years now, you have to leave them all behind and go to whatever you want. Leaving the home, his uncle met him. And he says, leave even without your clothes. He went to the companions, he got a piece of cloth, and that is what he covered himself with. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa taught him Quran. And he was very versed in Quran. To the extent that Medina was about to open. And in the Bayatul Aqaba, and some of, the, some of the companions of Medina came to Mecca, and they asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can you send someone to teach us deen, to teach us Quran? And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent the first ambassador of Islam, the first ambassador of Muhammad 
Salawatullahi wasalam alayhi Musab ibn Umayr to Medina. He made the migration, he came to Medina. As'ad ibn Zurara radiallahu ta'ala anhu was the one who looked after him in Medina. And he was very, very, very pious. A young man, give up everything before. Coming into Medina teaching the people. One day in his lectures, in his dars, one of the enemies came to him and want to hurt him. Are you leaving everything our forefathers came with? I wanted to fight. He says, instead of fighting me, why don't you listen to what I have to say? Instead of fighting me, why don't you listen to what I have to say? The man agreed, they sat down. Musa bin Umayy started to read the Quran. Allah changed the heart of his enemy and he accepted Islam. He says, I know of a man who is a friend of mine, who is the leader of his tribe. If he accepts Islam, the entire tribe will accept Islam. He brought his friend, he listened to Musa bin Umayr, he accepted Islam, the entire tribe accepted Islam. When the Rasul sallallahu alayhi came into Medina, Medina was filled with Muslims. Who was the one who opened Medina? Many times we hear of the hadith. That when someone dies, their actions stop except three things. One of them is what? Of some dini knowledge that you have left behind. That if this person continue to do it, you will get the reward even in your grief. Who was the one who opened Medina? Who was the one who converted all those people in Medina before the coming of Rasulullah sallallahu wa sallam? It was Musa ibn Umar. It was a time of Badr. And the Muslims got victory. He saw his blood brother in bondage. And he passed by his brother in deen and Islam. And he says, hold tight to this one because his mother is rich. His blood brother looked at him and he said, are you talking to me? He says, no, I'm talking to my brother. I'm talking to my brother in deen because he is my brother. You are not with us because you are not a Muslim. This is my brother. His, his mother is rich. She will pay us a very high ransom. Then come to the latter part of his life, Allahu Akbar. Listen to a youth who lived like a prince. Listen to a youth who gave up everything and taught the people Islam and Deen. Came the battle of Uhud. And we know Uhud was a tragedy and a lesson for the Muslims. Musa ibn Umayr was in the battlefield like the other companions, radiallahu ta'ala And the ten archers who were on the Mount of Rumah, next to Mount Uhud, when the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them that even if you see the boys picking on our bodies, do not leave this Mount Roma, for the people can come around and they can attack us from behind. But as the companions disobeyed because they thought they won, and Khalid bin Walid took the horsemen and came around and started to attack the Muslims, even the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was pierced through his teeth, the arrow came, pierced his helmet and through his teeth, and he was also bleeding. Musab ibn Umayr was, sawing, was seeing all of this that was around him. And there and then he made a decision. You see, many a times, my respected brothers and sisters, we live in a society of affluence, influence, a society where we are rich, where we have many things in our lives, and we don't want to give up some of them for the deen of Allah. Musa ibn Umayr seeing the people attacking the Rasulullah. So he started to chant and he says, Allahu Akbar and other things. And he draw the attention of these people. And over 70 of them attacked him. The split decision that he made at the time, and he held the banner of Islam in his hands, was should I die for Allah and his Rasul or should I flee the battlefield? You see here is where you and I come in. What are the split decisions we make in our lives? He was in the battlefield. Death is around him. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being attacked. He chanted. He diverted them. They are coming to attack him. Had the banner in both hands. As they come towards him, he recited one ayah. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ 
قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلْ أَفَا إِمَّاتَ You know and it continues Muhammad is no none but a messenger Muhammad is just but a messenger Other messengers have died before him If he is killed Would you then go back on your heels? And if people came and he cut off his right hand And he held the banner on his left hand And he came on the other side and he recited the verse again only that time it wasn't a verse, it was a statement of Musa bin Umayr. Wama Muhammadun illa Rasul. And he cut up his left hand. And then he clutched the flag. He clutched the banner of Islam between what is remaining of his hands. And he recited the ayah again, but they spare him and he fell dead. Seventy plus wounds for the deen of Allah and the Rasul. Later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored the words of Mus'ab ibn Umayr and he made it an ayah in Surah Ali Imran. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ And it continues. The companions walking in the battlefield, the battle is over. And they were instructed to give salams to the shuhada. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came onto the body of, Umar, of Mus'ab ibn Umayr. And he says, Assalamu alayka ya Musa ibn Umar. Looking at Musa ibn Umar with 70 plus wombs, dead for Allah and his Rasul. They brought him and they looked towards the things that he had with him when he died. The belongings and they didn't find nothing but one old torn blanket. And they are about to bury Musa ibn Umar when they pulled the blanket. When they pulled the blanket over his head, his feet would become uncovered. They pulled the blanket towards his feet, his head would become uncovered. <laughs> Who set the trends in today's society that we live in? Who set the standards? Who set the bar high? Look at the man who lived like a prince and look at what he gave up. Now look at the way that he died. When in Mecca, he had every single thing that he ever wanted. Now when he died, one blanket cannot even cover him when he is being shrouded. Allahu The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was about to, to, to pray the janazah of Mustafa ibn Umayyad. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited one ayah. From the believers are those real men who, fill, who fulfill the covenant that was given to them by Allah. Some of the believers, some of the real men they already give, they already fulfilled their due. And some of them are waiting to give their due. And they would not differ. They would not exchange that, but they would give it again and again. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa looked at the body of Musa ibn Umayr. And he said, Bakh in Bakh. Verily, the Multaqa, the place of meeting for us, where Musa ibn Umayr 